What was seen in the brink of an eye and spread almost across the whole world was begun by the running giant of Bordeaux, blessed Father William Joseph Shagnard, in 1817. His life experiences and prayer at the shrine of Our Lady of the Piron during his exile time in Spain resulted in his being inspired by Mary to re-Christianize France by beginning a group of people dedicated to Mary, the mother of Christ. Father William Joseph Chaminad was born in 1761. He lived his priestly life during the French Revolution, which forced him into exile in Spain because of the anti-clericalism that broke out during this time. While in Spain, he visited a shrine called Our Lady of the Pira. He was inspired to start a group dedicated to Mary called the Sodality, today's Marianist lay community. From this group came dedicated men following the charism of Father Shamnad and forming a congregation called the Society of Mary, nicknamed the Marianists. The purpose of this was to recover the lost faith in France by listening to the voice of our Blessed Virgin Mary, do whatever he tells you. After the death of the running giant in 1850, his spirit continued to affect the lives of many people worldwide. Through his disciples, he conquered mountains and valleys, lakes and rivers, jungles and forests, and reached the soil of Africa to work for the coming of the kingdom of the Son of Mary. Marianist came to English-speaking Africa in 1957. They lived and worked in Nigeria from 1957 to 1985. In 1960, 1961, and 1965, they also developed a presence in Eastern English-speaking Africa, in Malawi, Kenya, and Zambia, respectively where they started several missions. This documentary covers a brief history of the current missions of the Marianists in the region of Eastern Africa. The Marianists came to Malawi in 1960. Primarily, they worked in Katabe, where they took over a high school. In 1966, they went to the town of Nzuzu, where they built and staffed Nzuzu Technical School. Brother John Burton did much of the setting up of the buildings at Nzuzu Technical College, and Brother Charles Warren became the director of the school in 1967. Due to personal pressure, the Marianists left both in Zuzu and Katabe. These schools are now in the hands of the government of Malawi. For the current missions that the Marianists have in Malawi, we talk of Shamnad Secondary School and Milaku Technical Institute in Kalonga District and Shamnad Marianist Secondary School in Lilongwe District. The Shamnadi Secondary School in Kalonga was established in 1963 with the help of Brother George Dure. Mr. Ntambo, the headmaster of Shamnadi Secondary School, the School of Champions, shares more about Shamnadi Secondary School. Uh, my name is Island John Tambo. Currently, I'm the head teacher of Shamnadi Secondary School since 2018. As far as I know, Chaminadi Secondary School was established in 1962. And this particular school was actually not established here. It was at St. Mary's Parish, very, very close to Lake Malawi. In those days, it was a co-educational institution. It had both boys and uh, girls. But later on, uh, when the school moved to the present site, 
uh, it is only boys who came here, but the boys, the girls, were actually sent to Marymount Secondary School. So, in terms of uh, is the establishment, I would actually say that it was established by the Marianist brothers. And at that particular time, they came from the United States of America. Our records are showing that uh, the first headmaster or the first principal of this particular great Chaminati Secondary School in Malawi was uh, late brother Dule. Since it was established, uh, Chaminati Secondary School, in terms of offering secondary education, it has been a star performer in Malawi. So that most of the people that you see having high ranks in the army, in the universities, in government departments, in palestinian organizations, and some indeed are abroad, they are doctors and professors. Those are the products of Chaminadi Secondary School here in Malawi. What makes Chaminadi very, very special is that uh, we are actually using the principle of uh, Marianist education, which I can comfortably read them to you. One of them, uh, we have education for formation in faith, we have education in the family spirit, we also provide an integral quality education. We also have to educate these children for service, justice and peace, and then finally, and we educate them for adaptation and change. But in other words, in summary, what I can say is that we believe in the integral development of uh, a child, whereby uh, we need to develop, or Chaminati develops, the students academically and morally, because we don't want to have educated savages. When they come here in Form 1, the first thing that we do is to orient them. They need to know that they are at a Catholic institution. Uh, after that, the heavy orientation is actually done. We make sure that on uh, every Wednesday uh, they go to the chapel where we have the Holy Mass and uh, the school chaplain tries as much as possible to actually preach to them uh, in a way that they should understand that they are a Catholic institution. Not that we can make everybody a Catholic, but uh, the kind of preaching that is done there also helps them to excel academically. Working with the Marianists, brothers, it has been very, very wonderful. These people are always hard working, and then the teachers and the students themselves are able to copy from their hard working spirit. So our students are hardworking, teachers are hardworking. Uh, secondly, uh, the Marianist uh, brothers are always smart. I've never seen a uh, Marianist brother who is dated. And uh, as uh, you know, uh, cleanliness is next to godliness. So our students, we also teach them to emulate the cleanliness from their brothers, the brothers. We are also actually um, helped at the school uh, very much by the bursaries which are offered by the Marianist brothers. Some of the students are coming from marginalized families, very, very poor families, they live below the poverty line. So when they come here, they are given bursaries. But the, the bursaries are attached to conditions. The first condition is that they must actually be hard workers in class, the intellectual capability must actually be good, and then secondly, they must actually be well behaved. If they do not actually qualify for these two, we normally, through the head teacher's office, disqualify them. Because paying money for those is like uh, wasting uh, money, uh, putting money into the drain and then it goes with the water. In terms of successes, we have brought so many. First and foremost, uh, many, many, many Malawians have uh, uh, excelled academically here. Uh, most of them are in the army, in different universities, they are lecturers, 
there are doctors and professors all over. Some are within the country, some are outside. So that is an achievement, number one. <clears throat> number two, uh, as I indicated earlier on, in terms of behavior, we are not there to produce educated savages, no. Shaminadi produces students who are academically and morally well balanced. So to us, that one is a, 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 a big, big, big achievement, apart from the many achievements that we have. On the challenges, yes, there are many. This school now was expanded into a triple stream. In the 60s, it used to be single stream. Come to 70s and 80s, it used to be double stream. But now, it is triple stream. So the major challenge that we have is that some of the buildings which we have around are very, very old. They are dilapidated, so we need to rehabilitate them. Two, we need to build more teacher houses. We need to build more classrooms and even more hostels because the school has expanded. Imagine, now we have over half a million boys in the school. Wow. Yeah, so that's about that. Um, apart from that, it's something that I already said, most of some of the students are very, very poor. They cannot afford to pay the fees, so they need really to be assisted. Right. And the money and his brothers are trying their part. I'm very, very grateful, first of all, to the Catholic Church in general, but specifically, I want to give uh, thanks to the Marianist brothers for establishing Chaminadi Secondary School. When they came here as Chaminadi Mission, you must actually understand that the first institution to be established was Chaminadi Secondary School itself. Mila Kuteke Institute came much, much later. Yeah, so we're grateful it has educated many, many people and we feel uh, that they will not actually leave the school alone, they will continue uh, assisting the school as they have been doing from time in the morning. After the establishment of Shamnad Secondary School, the Marianists started the Miracle Technical Institute in 2000. Miracle is a nation technical institute located in the western outskirts of Kalonga district. It is a kilometer away from Karonga Airport and it is a walking distance from the well-known school of the champions, Shaminad Catholic Secondary School. The word miracle is an acronym for the Marianist Institute of Rural Artisans for Christian Life Education. The institute was initially intended for poor orphans handicapped by the deadly HIV and AIDS. Recently, the institution has been open to anyone who wants to acquire vocational skills while maintaining its purpose of supporting the poor. Brother Pacharo Joseph Mfune is a current director of Miracle and he has more to say. I would want to share something small about the, the, our ministry, Miracle Technical Institute. Um, of interest, um, Miracle Technical Institute is a, a, a one of the national technical colleges in Malawi. Of course, it was upgraded um, almost five years ago to become a national. And by becoming a national technical college, it means it can receive and recruit students from all corners of Malawi. Miracle is a synonym an acronym that stands for Mayanese Institute of Rural Artisans for Christian Life Education, Miracle. And um, what are the programs that are offered um, uh, at Miracle Technical Institute? We have uh, almost three departments. We have uh, informal technical um, department, we have uh, in, uh, informal technical department and then business courses department. Under informal 
or technical courses. We are offering three programs. Uh, this is cosmetology, uh, catering and also hospitality management, and then tiling fashion design. And for somebody to come to join these courses, uh, it doesn't require a lot of qualifications, even a, a standard A dropout would easily join them. And then we have uh, formal technical programs. Under uh, this department, we have seven of them. We have cosmetology, we have uh, fashion design, and um, we have uh, carpentry and joinery, we have uh, ICT, we have uh, solar photovoltaic installation, electrical installation. Yeah, so that, that makes seven. And these programs take three years. Uh, for a student to finish. Why three years? I know it's, it's too much for, 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 for a certificate graduate to take three years in, in, in training, technical courses. But how the programs are designed is that um, uh, there's some times where a student has to go for uh, attachment, maybe spend one year or six months and come back to class. So that's how it, it's not like three years a student has to be be doing theory in the campus now. So one year a student will be in campus and then the other year would be on attachment like that, two, three years. And then business courses we have ICT um, and um, community development. Previously we used to have a number of business courses just but because of uh, low enrollment we had to, to shave them off because it was becoming very expensive for for the school to manage. Um, why Miracle? Yeah, I think I have to say something about why Miracle was, was, was founded. It is commonly known that previously brothers only used to work at Chaminade Center School. That is from 16, I mean 1862. But in 90s, I think um, the brothers had to do to discover a need for vocational skills development center. And uh, brother Peter Daino, with his, uh, some brothers at, at that particular time, that to conduct a feasibility study uh, that would inform them what was really a, a need, a need, a situational need um, at that particular time, especially regarding uh, the youth, especially those we are dropping out from secondary school, we're not finishing the primary school education. And the, the visibility informed two issues, social issues. One was um, the issue of uh, abject poverty that was facing a number of young people within Kalonga and also part of Chitipa and Drumpi. And then uh, this again was, was studied at, at depth and they realized that uh, the main problem was the issue of, um, of HIV AIDS at that particular time and which left a lot of orphans as evidenced by the uh, Lusuiro orphan care because previously I think there was a good working relationship with me between Miracle and the, and the Lusuiro orphan care. So these were the issues, HIV AIDS and abject poverty which led to uh, destitute living of young people in Karonga, Chitipa and Rompi, but also led to unemployment for many young people into f informal uh, works. So the brothers, they felt if they would come up with a vocational skill that would deal with these uh, social ills, it would really help the young people to find uh, jobs through the skills that they would get at the center. So that's, that's, that's how MIRA came to, to, to exist. Uh, maybe in terms of um, achievements, since MIRA was established in 1999, uh, previously what used to happen was that um, as MIRA officers would go in the villages trying to look for for young people to come and get trained. So it was not easy for, 
for, for, for miracle people to convince young people to come. Uh, remember the, 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 the reason why it existed. So young people they, they didn't want to associate themselves with the, with, with, the, with the school because it was regarded as a school for orphans. So, yeah. so such was the scenario. But still, I think they worked very hard to convince some, some villagers, uh, some families in the village for students to come. At that particular time, there was no body. So they would come and get trained and go back. And then the, we also we uh, that program, we also we had the uh, two kids program, and two kids program would mean after they graduate they would be given a setup pack in terms of skills to start using. Maybe if they are carpenter and general students, they would at least have something for them to set up a small workshop. And the same would be for the tellers and caterers. Um, in 2005, there was a pressure from Tiveta. Tiveta is an uh, authorizing body or regulatory body of technical training in Malawi. So there was a pressure to say that we have to upgrade our training. Now, upgrading the training, technical training at Malawi, it meant having qualified uh, teachers who are capable of offering skills young people but before that I think yeah, almost all the teachers that were there didn't have good qualifications so I think the brothers at that point of time that to to register uh, a miracle with the with the, one of the colleges in Malawi to be able to offer at least a, a certificate that would allow our teachers to train effectively and also follow all the pedagogies and competences of teaching. And that was done, and uh, uh, fortunately enough, the school was registered and activated. And the, the benefit of registering the school and with Tiveta, it meant also Tiveta sending students for training to Miracle. Remember, I had mentioned the issue of difficulties in, in enrollment at that particular time. So, the coming of Tibeta really um, broadened the, 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 the scope of, of, of the school and then also making the school known uh, to all corners of Malawi because Tibeta would send students all the way from Brantaya, Mchinji, um, Angoshi. So, yeah, that's how now Miracle is getting now to, 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 to be on the map of Malawi. The, the, the other issue is that uh, I think the growth has taken place in terms also of, also of infrastructure. As I said, there was no body, it was a day school. But come 2014, at least there was a miracle that we had the uh, girls hostel built in the same year 2014. And then uh, one year after that, again, the boys hostel was, was built, or almost the same, same type. So this really strengthened um, our, 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 um, our delivery in, in, in terms of training because many parents doubted our school because they never really wanted the girls to come to our school and then stay outside. So this was really good for girls also to be protected from many social ills. Um, so it was really good for us also to be able to manage uh, the students that have been entrusted to us by many parents in the country. Another achievement is that we had a project, um, a solar photovoltaic uh, training program, uh, which started in 2017. With this project, apart from, from infrastructure and the equipment addition to the school, also it, it meant also having a new program. Now having a new program means also growing the enrollment number. So that was, I think, a very big achievement that we have made. We made in 2017 to 2020. Yeah, so we were able to have a very strong infrastructure that accommodates at least a number of students. And we have two workshops for solar, a library and computer lab and two classrooms. So that was a very big achievement for us. And then plus a new program that is continuously 
they offered it's a surplus it's a plus for us and then apart from the projects we were picked by Tiveta to pilot the cosmetology program and that's how we started offering a cosmetology program in fact i think we were the first in Malawi to start doing that of course we had the challenge of um, of finding teachers because as a new program definitely uh, people didn't know that uh, somebody would go to a, to a class and learn about uh, hairdressing and salon and barber shop so that was a challenge but now the view is changing people i think are getting more interested so that's a that's that's, that's a good news in that regard um and then we have also intensified the IGS, income generating activities, just to boost the little income that we get from oil wishes and also from super fees. Uh, previously we had pottery, or long term, um, long time uh, IGA, but now we have the bakery that started some, some years, few years ago. And uh, it's good to know that I think the bakery is picking up very well. Uh, of course, we had, we, had, we, had, we had challenges at the beginning, trying to know the business and to know our customers, to know the market, and to know uh, the best practices in producing the bread and other products. But now, I think we are getting there. We are getting there, and if um, roughly, if the business is able to give us almost ten thousand dollars as a profit annually, I think it's. it's, 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 it's something to to recognize that the business is doing very well and of course we're not satisfied we want to do more and we've seen the gaps where we need to improve for us to do more in that regard and of course pottery because the our main customer since they stopped uh, their business in uh, uranium mining the business a bit went down but uh, we still want to resume and really uh, go seriously into it and we hope by next year we, of course we have chicken already players but i think we want to improve more so that we have a big number so that we, we see the benefits uh, coming from there i've talked about the challenges and i mean the, the benefits that we have uh, achieved that, that miracle has achieved so far but uh, it would be of less value if I don't mention why or which need is miracle um, trying to solve in as far as skills development is concerned because there are many uh, there are many technical colleges now in Malawi much domain. But I, I still feel three issues stand out that miracle exists currently and these are the issues that miracle is trying to, to solve. One is the issue of unemployment. I think everyone would agree with me, and I think this is an African continental issue, African issue, that young people really are finishing schools, but they don't have jobs. And this is the case for Malawi. Uh, our population is youth, youthful, and there are so many young people who are finished school and they're not able to find jobs. And the skills development is a solution. Maybe other countries may have not yet realized that, but I think I like Malawi that um, the government also has seen the need for, for that. That's why we get good support from Tibeta. Anytime that we have a suggestion uh, regarding skills development, uh, they are very open and flexible to accommodate and also share their views. So, unemployment is one of the, 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 the social, uh, social economic problem that miracle is trying to, to, to solve. Another thing is um, um, young people still need to find purpose. As much as we want to solve the social economic problem that, of unemployment, but we want to use this opportunity of them coming to miracle to impact values and also that they should be able to find a sense of purpose. I'm happy that at least the uh, and for the very first time, we have a brother coming from Mirago. That is, uh, I know when he came to Mirago, he never thought that definitely would find a vocation at Mirago. But I think this is a very good sign for many young people that maybe when they come in the future, 
not really necessarily the, the vocation of, uh, of a brother or a priest and all that, but also maybe finding themselves into good marriages and finding their vocation of marriage also being responsible parents and citizens of the country. So that's our, 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 um, our goal. Our goal is so that at least we have young people who are productive and are also who are thinking and also contributing a lot to the development of the country. Yeah, so that's the issue about you. Why miracle is this kind? I know in the future definitely all these uh, problems may change. That's why we are very flexible in, when it comes to responding to the needs of our time. Maybe I should say something about uh, the challenges that Miracle is facing. One main challenge that Miracle is facing is the donor fatigue. Miracle is established on well wishes contribution. It's now that at least the students are able to pay, but previously they were not even paying anything. I remember passing through Miracle when I was a candidate 206. I think at that time the, the students were not, pay, were not contributing a bag of mess. Only a bag of mess, and then you, you get your skills and even given tokens. So uh, that's, that's the issue. Uh, donor issue. But we are fight, trying to find and find uh, other strategies of making sure that we continue being available to our young people in terms of skills training. And then where we are. Is there also another big issue, geographical location. I already said that now in Malawi there are so many technical uh, colleges in So if for young people to make a decision to come from Rwanda and say I'm going to Mirabo, it should be very courageous enough. Because that means that students will have to pass many, many college for, for him or her to come to Mirabo. But we are trying to be very uh, special in our training that attracts young people to come to us. So that's, that's one, uh, one, one problem, geographical location. And this geographical location made us to, to shave off some four business courses because at the very beginning when we started the business courses we were doing very well and the numbers were coming. But then now people decided to start their own colleges, smaller ones, the Veranda colleges, and almost each and every now, each and every technical college has also business courses. So that disrupted uh, our, our, our strategies so much. That's why now we said now we could not continue. We could not continue to becoming very expensive for us because these are the very same courses that we were almost were to, to, to recruit high qualified teachers and uh, that not tally very well for the number of the students we are getting so we have to share them off. I did been that maybe we were in Mzuzu in a city or in Longo definitely where these courses are doing very well would be, would be also doing very well but now what do we do? That's our problem. And then the, the curriculum program itself sometimes gives challenge to our young people, not, I've said three years, not many young people also are happy with this. And some drop, drop away in the process of their attachment and all that. Uh, mostly girls. So that's a very big challenge that we have. Of course, we have shared this challenge with Itiveta and hopefully they are looking into it to make sure that at least the, the period of training is reduced to a period that is manageable for our young people. In fact, for some young people who are who feel that if they have been at Mirak for one year and they feel they have enough skills for them to proceed, they don't come back and find them doing their own businesses. So that's a, that's a challenge. Of course, now this is the challenge that the short programs um, are here to solve. So because we have just started the short program, we'll see how they'll be doing. And we want to sell this same to the to to the to, to, to better for policy uh, making influence. We hope that it will be able to influence them one day, and they, they look into the, the, the period. But we we have a project that is is going to be uh, starting very soon.
called SEV. SEV is also an acronym that stands for Supposed for Vibrant Economy. Uh, it's, it's the money that is donated by the World Bank to Malawi government and us who are given our own window, a competitive window for all the technical colleges to compete. And we were lucky that our project was um, approved. And it is a project to a tune of 416 uh, million kwacha. And under this project, we'll be able to have a new girls, uh, girls hostel, a new block, and then a new course called Livestock Management. We are very happy and we are looking forward to make sure that this project also is implemented, implemented effectively. Yeah, we have a clinic. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm being very careful in, in, when it comes to the naming. I don't want to call it a clinic because we are not yet, we are not yet there. Otherwise, clinic would mean having a certificate. But what we are calling it, we are calling it a first aid health facility uh, and through this we have uh, a, a nurse that helps with the, some not serious uh, illnesses that students have once in a while but again when also we have very serious issues uh, students are referred to the government hospitals but uh, so far so good the, 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 the clinic has helped us a lot as I said was previously we had many cases as being woken up at night, and the driver being woken up at night to take the student to the hospital. But now, at least, the, the, the case is, is not as it used to be, which is a plus for, for, for us and also for, for, for school. Uh, apart from the, the infrastructure, we also have, we'll be able to have uh, new equipment. So, uh, it's really, it's, it's, we thank God, it's really a grace working for, through us. And we thank God for the project. Yeah, I think that's 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 all for now. Uh, thank you for listening to me. And God bless you. Shamnad Marian Secondary School is located in the central part of Malawi in Lilongwe district, the capital city of Malawi. It is in Chinkoko village, which is 26 km away from Lilongwe town. Shamnad Marianist Secondary School was established in September 2019 and is in Lilongwe diocese under the Marianist religious. Father Michael Otieno who has worked there especially for the first structures of the school, shares some of his experience at this place when it was just a farm. Okay, the beginning of uh, Shamina Secondary School in Lilongwe has a long history. Uh, many years before I went to Malawi, the region had already acquired a land about 45 kilometers from Milongwe town. And so in 2016, I was requested to go and uh, take care of the property because from the time the land was bought, nothing much had been done. And so it was entrusted to our community in Karonga, but due to the distance, it was essential that somebody stayed in Lilongwe. So I was in Lilongwe, but working under the community in, the, in Karonga. And when I first went to the land, it was bare because I, I think after the, the land had been sold to us, the villagers started cutting down the trees and all that. So. It was in October, the place was dry, the land was barren. And um, I went with the then regional superior, Father Gabriel and Brother Pachalo, and uh, we were able to identify the boundaries of the land and uh, come up with some ideas of what we wanted done. 
we didn't have money for construction and so the first thing was uh, uh, maybe have some perimeter fence to avoid or to prevent encroachment but also do some little farming and so within that short period we prepared uh, part of the land and we did the first farming of maize in that piece of land. Uh, in the process, it was the Office of Development was in touch with a potential donor who was uh, already sponsoring our works in Karonga. So the donor gave us some money to start off and we decided the first thing was to put up a small structure so that there can be a permanent presence in the land to drill the borehole and uh, start doing some fencing of the land and so that's exactly what we started doing and uh, through divine providence uh, we ended up getting extra money and we could now start uh, officially constructing the first buildings um, it wasn't very easy at the beginning because um, before I went to the wrong way, the long way there was already a time frame and we were one year behind from the initial year we were supposed to start the construction and so a work that was supposed to be done within two years we were trying to do within a year and uh, there were brothers on the ground, brother Duncan, brother Kennedy and brother Docker and they all worked really, you know, out of the normal working hours for us to meet the deadline. Um, construction in Ilongo was not so easy because the land was uh, swampy and the construction works were beginning at the beginning of the rainy season and so it wasn't so easy doing the foundations the road to the property was in bad shape so even bringing the property the, the materials to the property was quite a challenge but um, you know I would say again for me that's one work that I really saw the hand of God in it and of course the effort of the brothers on the ground we were able to have the necessary buildings ready for the school to have the first intake of students actually when the students were reporting on the opening day the hostel was still being worked on we had not finished all the works and the parents seemed to have had a lot of trust with us in us and they left the students with us in the classroom even before they could go into the hostels and uh, so eventually everything was in order we had the students moving and we continued with the construction we didn't have the teachers houses finished we didn't have any construction plan for the brother's house so we had to come up with an emergency a small house that could accommodate the brothers because uh, it was required uh, that the brothers should be in the property uh, 24 hours we could not run the school from uh, Lilong area 47 as we had initially thought we could and so a lot of things were done really in a hurry as such but uh, through God's guidance through God's intervention you know the school continued to grow up to what it is now. One of the most wonderful moments or one of the most wonderful experiences was our relationship with the locals, especially the chiefs. We really had very good relationships with them. And I remember at one time there was a woman who was making a claim to part of the land and uh, the chiefs and the villagers came very strongly to our defense and um, occasionally when there was something in the in the village we would make our contribution we would make our we'll go there 
physically, I mean at least a representative. We also had a primary school that was in, a, in the neighborhood that was in really bad shape. So we did some help as we were doing some our construction. They didn't have toilets and all that, so we constructed the first toilet for that school. And uh, uh, so it was, it was very clear that um, we were there for the community. We talked to the contractor that all the labor work that did not require skilled laborers, if you could get that from the village. And so we had a lot of villagers getting a source of income from the works that we were doing. And um, some of them actually ended up being uh, permanent workers in the school and some of them are still working in the school um, up to now. So the first structures were eight classrooms. Yeah, it was eight classrooms. It was four blocks. Each block had uh, two classrooms. We had uh, the library computer room, which at the beginning we were using as a uh, the dining room. We had some teacher's houses. We had a, a small house that served as the residential place for the brothers. And we had some two houses that helped for uh, non-teaching staff. Um, electricity was a problem. We didn't have uh, the national grid in the property. So we relied on the solar system and the generator, which was rather expensive, especially running the, gen the generator. But uh, the work continued, and uh, some brothers, after a year, a year after the school started, I was reassigned to a new community in Karonga. Other new brothers came in, and uh, they have continued with the work up to where the school now is and uh, looking back for sure I'm really happy and proud to see you know what has happened over all over that period of time. Yeah. Brother Kennedy who is the current deputy principal of the school and one of the brothers who was there when this when this school started gives us the current situation of the school and his main focus is on academics. My name is uh, Brother Kennedy, the Deputy Principal of uh, Shamilaj Manai Secondary School. Just want to highlight a few things about our school. Uh, the school began in uh, 2019 and at the moment we had uh, four brothers and uh, four teachers. I had a brother, by then we had brother Adoka as the principal, then myself, brother Duncan and also father Jun. And uh, through the education we worked so hard and uh, managed to uh, enroll 90 students. And uh, by then we also had only one, one hostel. And uh, currently through God's providence I would say that um, we are blessed now with uh, four hostels and a multi-purpose hall and a new administration block. So we are now talking of uh, 380 student, 386 students and uh, 17 teachers. The motto of the school is uh, Fides et Moribus, which is uh, faith and morals. And um, the characteristics of modern education uh, together with the motto, help us to you know, teach uh, the boys that we have at the moment, bearing in mind that um, besides a classroom work, teaching them mathematics, you know, science, they have to also grow in the knowledge of God. Um, we have uh, a number of activities that uh, help us in uh, achieving our, our mission and also in uh, realizing that uh, these characteristics, formation in faith, you know, uh, holistic education is realized. Uh, we have uh, spiritual activities, we have uh, sports activities. Now, talking of uh, spiritual activities, 
we have you know, evening prayer. So every evening after classes, before students are take their meals, they have evening prayer. Then uh, the boys also have um, mass every Wednesday and also uh, tell teachers to join. And uh, we also have um, YCS, this is uh, the Young Christian Society and also SCON. We also have uh, clubs and uh, all these activities help the boys to, you know, to, to realize why they are here at school and to be focused. Um, we also have uh, students who, are, um, in the, who have joined the lay learners and also teachers and this helps us to know that uh, indeed the, the, the teachers also and also students love our life and um, uh, we are proud to, 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 to see the boys and also teachers join the lay learners a sign that uh, indeed our mission is active here at uh, Shamila Marin Secondary School. Um, I would also say that uh, through dedication and sacrifice of teachers and also the support staff and uh, everyone you know, around, we help, we manage to achieve excellent uh, results at a junior secondary school uh, examination and uh, we emerged number three national wide. And uh, uh, currently, uh, this year 2023, the Form 4s just wrote their exams and we expect uh, excellent results because our teachers are so dedicated and also the brothers work very hard day in, day out to make sure that um, the program is run smoothly. Um, enrollment of, at this school is done every year. We take in or we enroll about 90 students but um, the demand at the moment is so high that um, we need to expand our school and add more uh, classrooms so that we can enroll more students than uh, the ones we, we enroll. Um, in this, it is in this line that I will also talk about the plans that we have. Uh, the plans uh, to have at least girls at the school and uh, this will help uh, the, boys, the boys and girls um, from the local village to have access to our money's education and um, we realize that um, the boys and girls here, they are, some of them are marginalized, they cannot afford um, currently to, to be at our school but um, we are we're working hard to make sure that um, we have a bursary for the boys and girls so that they can also uh, be part of us and this will help us have the, you know, the initial plan of having many boys and girls from the local village have access or join our school so that we can um, you know grow uh, together and also help them help these boys and girls you know realize their dreams they know the, uh, sometimes they you know they admire so much um, their friends who are learning their students who are learning at this school and it is their wish and uh, and pray that um, also our wish that uh, they join our school um, uh, we are also lucky that we have a clinic at our school. We have one nurse who works hard, who helps the boys to, with these uh, minor diseases. But um, of course, uh, com complications like you know, operations and other you know, serious illnesses, we take the boys to, to a bigger clinic or bigger hospitals. Um, we are praying so hard that um, we enroll many boys and girls who are in want of education and uh, through our you know our mission we may you know help them realize their you know their dreams uh, it is our wish that we continue you know transforming the society but not also not only through education but also to help these boys grow into the knowledge of god because our mission is our, the mission of mary of forming uh, these boys and girls and forming people into other class. Thank you very much. How do they survive financially? What other developments are still going on at this school? What are they planning for the future? The director of the Shamnad Secondary School and the one in charge of construction at this school 
give us more information on what is happening on the ground. My name is Brother Thomas Jari. I'm the director of the school. So far I've been here for the last, I've uh, been here since 2021. And uh, since I came, there's a lot of development that uh, has taken place. Right now as we are talking, uh, the administration block is done. Uh, we have now the dormitories from Form 1, Form 2, Form 3, Form 4. And uh, right now as we are talking, the brother's house is continuing. We are almost done. By December, that should, it should be done. We have also been able to, um, to set another classroom, which should be ready by, I mean, we are, we are almost finishing. We are doing now, right now as we are talking, we are doing the painting. That means before the school, the student open in September, that class will be done. Uh, to maintain or for sustainability of our school, we have uh, we have a number of projects we are doing. Apart from academic, we have uh, livestock. Uh, this livestock include uh, cows, the dairy cows, and the the beef, uh, call the the local cows. That uh, therefore we don't have to buy animals. Uh, like when we need meat for the student, we just jump in our cage and we get a cow we slaughter, and uh, off we save uh, we save some money. We have also goats and sheep. Uh, for cows, we have 18 of them. They have started multiplying. For the sheep, we have almost uh, 18 of them. And the goat also the same figure, 18. And uh, apart from that, we also do farming. We have uh, we grow maize, we grow beans. Last year, we we were able to harvest uh, uh, 170 bags of 50 kgs. And uh, that means when we come to food stuff, we don't have to worry too much. We just uh, top up with some few bags, and then we are able to finish the whole year. Uh, therefore, that's what I would say for the development that's taking place here. And uh, we are also having a clinic. Uh, that's another project that we have just started the other day. This is just to help us get uh, or cut the cost of the, uh, taking students out there for medical and other things. Therefore, whenever the students are sick, they go to a clinic here. They are treated there. And, uh, we only take students who have serious medical, uh, medical issues to other hospitals. If I would say from um, uh, all, uh, from January, we have had the clinic the clinician there who is able to do a number of issues. And uh, soon we may also open doors for the neighbors to come and be treated. And uh, maybe little by little they can also give us some money so that we can sustain that clinic. Uh, we have also our intention of having girls uh, girls in this compound. Right now we have only boys, but in future we also intend to have girls. And we have started the construction of the girls' hostels. Right now we are just doing the for we have just done foundation. And there are still a lot that uh, we look forward to do uh, so that we make this school one of the best schools in Malawi.